So hi, Regina. Thanks for making time to meet with us today. So the reason why I'm having this interview is also to catch up with our alumni and also to show the younger hockey kids, those in lower sec perhaps, what our seniors have done. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Regina. So I started playing hockey when I was in primary school, like primary six. So I joined because my CCA closed down, so I switched CCAs to hockey uh, and also from peer pressure, la, so some of my influence from my friends. And I enrolled in Sengkang in 2009. Yeah, so I was SEC 1 in 2009 and it was coach's first batch. So uh, we... Oh yeah, so my position that I played in hockey is quite varied actually. So in secondary school, my main position is in midfield. Yeah, then in JC, I move on as a forward and became a utility player like, basically. Yeah, so uh, in secondary school, uh, in BDF, I was the uh, female girls uh, hockey captain and then when I move on to JC I continued playing so I DS it to VJ uh, then I was uh, yeah I was a uh, forward and after that uh, we went on to play for clubs and still playing for external clubs uh, but for more recreational purposes yeah then uh, after JC, I went to SIM, I majored in sociology, and then I signed on with the army, uh, infantry. Yep. Okay, wow. It's really uh, rare to find a female combat officer. So how did you decide to get on this path? How did you, what made you decide to join the army? Yeah, so I think there was a couple of reasons why I want to join. So since I was young, I wanted to join uh, uh, a civil service of sorts. So um, I was thinking either police force, uh, SAF. So I was pretty open. I didn't know that there were like so many options. Um, but I sat on uh, SAF because I felt that uh, I like the outdoors and it's something that I enjoy doing so um also from the influence of my dad and my uncle so my uncle is still in the army my dad was in the police force so i've seen some of the ceremonies that they've been through and what their job actually entails so i like the concept of the job satisfaction that provides for them uh. yeah so for training related yeah i mean there, there are definitely a lot of ups and downs uh mostly physically strenuous activities but uh you learn that your limit is not your limit uh, because you never ever push yourself to the limit but because of other people yelling at you and uh to reach to push yourself even further i think uh that is definitely something that i i gain uh, quite a bit yeah so looking back at my OCS experience, I felt that, um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, like your limit is never the, the, the maximum that you can push to. And when you think you cannot, um, there's definitely a way to do it. Uh, that's, why, that's why we have the guidance of our coaches, our instructors. And for me, in my case in OCS, my commanders. Uh, so through their years of experience and how they know us um, uh, throughout the course, uh, they're be better able to access, assess if we're able to push on and so on. So I think very important is to trust in the process and trust in your uh, instructors la, in guiding you. Yep. Well, that's very inspiring. Um, did playing sports in uh, in secondary school and you know, playing hockey in Sengkang with the guidance of the coaches and the teachers and all, did, did that help you um, go through the difficult times in, in 
OCS. I understand also there were uh, some candidates that that dropped out, uh, including men, and but but you persevered till the end. So how much of that uh, can you attribute to playing uh, hockey in Sengkang? One thing's for sure, like our teachers are very dedicated. So um, throughout my whole experience being in Sengkang, uh, being an athlete and going out for competitions, uh, one, my teachers always put aside uh, their time uh, to stay back with us, to help us, uh, especially those that went out for competition, to make up uh, for any missed like, lessons, that lessons that they missed. Uh, or to just provide them extra help. Lah. So that was one thing that I was very grateful for, which helped me to excel in my grades as well. Uh, secondly, is to juggle between your studies and uh, the sports itself. I felt that for me personally, I was playing school, uh, I was playing club, and I was training in the national team, uh, the age group for a while. So um, I think it's very important to be disciplined so to be disciplined in a sense that you finish your school related stuff first like you need to prioritize as well before like you go for your training and whatsoever and if you don't then make up for it after training yeah so you need to know how to strike that balance and that only comes with um time and you figuring out what suits you best because uh, there's not one size fit all kind of thing yeah, so I think I think that really helps me time management as well, and also coaches and teachers for uh, keeping me on track lah. So I think this was some extra mile that the coaches and teachers actually put through uh, to us, which um, it really helped mold mold my character and helped me excel more, uh, excel better uh, in my schooling days. And uh, as you as you rightfully mentioned just now that um, throughout uh, OCS there's people that drop out. Um, it's with every batch the same. So to me, dropping out willingly and like or sustaining injuries and all that. Like if you drop out just because it's tough, right? Then I'll ask you to think again, lah, because it's all. It's really all in the mind because um, the training in OCS and training anywhere actually, like it's all very progressive, like in a sense that no coaches in the right mind or no instructors in the right mind would throw you into the deep end and ask you to run like 10 kilometers straight away, like without any practice or without any sort of guidance beforehand. So as I, as, as I mentioned before, la, like trust in the process, trust in the guidance of people because there's a thought process and there's a planning involved that ensures that you're set up for success. La. So if you have the correct mindset to, to just tell yourself to, to push a little further, train a little harder and believe and trust in the process, right? I think you will, you will not drop out of anything or you will not give up on anything. La. Yeah, so that's definitely something uh, that I felt if someone drop out of a course, yeah, this this is the main thing that uh, caused them to to not continue. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's that's uh, that's very wise words from you. Now, um, the situation now is a bit different. Um, we have. Um, we are doing a lot of our training online now. So hockey players being very used to playing on turf uh, mm. might not be used um, or have the same level of enthusiasm for the online sessions, let's, let's say, because um, being sports people, they want to be out there. So I think what words of uh, encouragement can you give to the students and the hockey players who are doing their coaching sessions online now. So, uh, I think Coach and Mr. Singh, you should know that uh, I'm a kind of person that uh, very hyperactive, uh, so I cannot really stay indoors or sit down for long. So, I really empathize and 
understand how they're feeling right now. Um, but I feel that a lot of the training can actually be done at home. So there was a period of time where I was a uh, stand-in or a uh, substitute goalkeeper, reserve goalkeeper. So I remember, <laughs> I remember like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I remember those period of times, right? There was actually like at home, like doing simple drills. That actually a lot of the trainings can be done at home. So things like even dribbling. Miss, Miss Priscilla really has a very good training program uh, set out. Yeah, later we will we will ask her about that. Yeah, so so yeah, actually there's a lot of training that can be done at home. La. And uh having not being not being able to go out is not an excuse to slack on training, but yeah, I think it's a very good way to have fun at home as well. Uh not just gaming and uh doing watching shows and all that. Yeah, it's a good alternative, lah. Yeah, so just find ways to stay active and yeah, don't let your fitness drop too much, ah. If not, you'll suffer <laughs> when you go back for training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let me ask uh Miss Priscilla some questions now. Uh, hi, Pris, how are you? I'm good. I have been working very hard. Uh, even though training has stopped for two months, I'm quite prepared. So all the drills um, that I've done, like you mentioned, can be done at home. And I have uh, in mind about the safety because I don't want the kids to be smashing stuff in the house, you know. And, uh, and also, not all of us have the luxury of having a very big uh, area in the house. So most of them kind of like do in a very small, confined area in the room. And I can see on online that there's actually not very much space to move around. So most of my drills are actually being contained around about two by two meter kind of space. And uh, training has been okay so far. We've already done, uh, with Sengkang set about three trainings, about two to three trainings. Yeah, I've already started with my poly as well. So we did about five trainings already. Yeah. So so like how, how important do you think these uh, trainings are during this, this time? Uh, so I've explained to the players that um, because I asked them, their homework was to to think about what are the skills that they are actually uh, lacking. So most have said uh, individual dribbling skills, which uh, right now at home, I think that's the best time for them to practice. And so I've uh, emphasized on the technical part uh, at this point of time. I mean, hitting all we cannot do. So we are going to fo focus a little bit more on the technical skill on individual uh, dribbling. Okay, yeah. so uh, thanks, Bris. I have observed the sessions. I think they are going quite well, and I hope that they will carry on. Uh, so right now, I'm going to end um, this interview with Regina and you. So Regina, once, once again, thank you for uh, your time with uh, coming here and spending time and I I think like right, deep down if every player were like you right it would be like unbeatable because <laughs> I like I still have memories of you even when you are at the bench you will always uh, hold the the side railings and say I want to go in I want to go in I want to go in put me in when will coach put me in I, I remember those those words so that's your like the typical type of gung ho attitude that that you've had and I and I hope that, and and I think that attitude has has uh, carried you when times were um, difficult in the army, or even when you might face future difficulties, and in the course of your work lah. Or, but I think um, your character is quite shining, and quite strong, and whatever that comes your way. I'm pretty sure you will overcome it just by being Regina. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, so thanks for everybody for attending this session, especially uh, Regina and Miss Priscilla. Uh, we will you. end. We will end here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well,